chapter 1 of the beginning of days. It's told among the wise that the first war began before Arda was full shaped, and ere yet there was anything that grew or walked upon earth, and for long Melkar had the upper hand, but in the midst of the war, a spirit of great strength and hardihood came to the aid of the valor, hardihood means strong. Hearing in the far heaven that uh, there was a battle in the little kingdom, and Arda was filled with the sound of his lather. So came Tolkas the strong, whose anger passes like a mighty wind, scattering cloud and darkness before it, and make a fleet before his wrath and his lather. And forsook Arda, and there was a beast for a long age, and Tolkas remained and became one of the valor of the kingdom of Arda. But Melkor brooded in the outer darkness. Brooded means things uh, unhappy, or un uh, aware of unhappy deeply. And his hate was given to Tulkos forever after. And that time the valor brought order to the seas and the lands and the mountains. And Ivana planted at last the seas that she had long devised. And since when the fires were subdued, or buried beneath the primeval, 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 primeval means the prime period or the first period, hells. So the hells uh, of the first, when uh, in, the, uh, in the first creation or shaping of the world. There was need of light. Only at the, uh, at the prayers of Yavanna or two mighty lamps for the lighting of the Middle Earth, which he had built amid the encircling seas. Then Varda filled the lambs, and Maui hallowed them. Hallowed them means sanctify them or make them holy. And the Valar set them upon high pillars, more lofty far than are any mountains of the later days. More lofty means higher. One lamb they raised near the north of the Middle Earth, and it was named Elwin. Elwin. And the other was raised in the south, and it was named Ormal. And the light of the lambs of the Valar followed out, followed out over the earth, so there that all was lit, and as it was in a changeless day, just like all the days, it's uh, sunny. Then the seas that Yavanna had sown began swiftly to sprout and to burgeon. Uh, Sworn means uh, scattering it, scattering the seeds to grow. So it began swiftly to sprout, to go and to uh, to burgeon, uh, yet uh, to go yet to full size. And there arose a multitude of growing things, great and small, mosses and grasses and great ferns, and trees whose tops were crowned with cloud as they were living mountains, but whose feet were uh, wrapped wrapped in a green twilight. And beasts came forth and dwelt in their grassy pla uh, plains, grassy plains, or in the rivers, and uh, the lakes, or walked in the shadows of the woods. As yet no flower had bloomed, nor any bird had sung. For this thing waited still their time in the bosom of Yavanna, but well there was of her imagining. So all these uh, woods and uh, where uh, trees, when the bee uh, beast dwelt it, it was yet uh, ungrown or unblossomed, nor any bird had sunk, waiting for a time for Yavan. Are nowhere more rich than in the midmost uh, parts of the earth, where the light of both the lamps met and blended, and there upon the isle of Almaren, 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 in the great lake was the first dwelling of the Valar, when all things were young, and new made green was yet marvel in the eyes of the makers, and they were long content. Now it come to pass, came to pass that the, uh, while the Valar rested from the, their labors and watched the growth and unfolding of the things that they had devised and begun, man we ordained Ordains means ordered or uh, calling, let's say, or make, yes. 
uh, a great feast and the valor uh, uh, and all their host came at his bidding at his attendance meet but only Antulkos were weary were uh, like tired for the cart of Auli and the strength of Tulkas had been at the, uh, the service uh, of all without ceasing, uh, ceasing facts, the days uh, of their labor, just, just like uh, they were working all the times, without ceasing or without decaying of their power. That's why they are so wary. And Merkur knew of uh, uh, of all that was done. For an even uh, for even then, he had secret friends and spies among the Maya whom he had converted to his cause. And far off in the darkness, he was filled with hatred, being jealous of the work of his peers, whom he desired to make subject to himself. Therefore, he gathered to himself spirits out of the halls of Ea that he had perverted to his service, and he deemed himself strong. Deemed means considered himself strong. And seeing now his time, he drew near again to Arda. Or do he means came again, or it's time to go again to Arda, and looked down upon it, and the beauty of the earth and its spring filled him the more with hate. Now therefore the valor were gathered upon al Maren, fearing no evil, and because of the light of Elowen, they did not perceive the shadow in the north that was cast from afar by Melchior. For he was grown dark as the night of the void, and it sang in the feast of the spring of Adaltulkos, espouse Nessa, espouse means, uh, let's say, marry her, yes, or make her espouse for himself, the sister of Orome, and she danced before the Valar upon the green grass of the Elmarin. Then Tulka slept, being weary and content, and make her deem that his hour had come. And he passed therefore over the walls of the night with his host, and cam came to the Middle Earth far in the north. And the Valar were not aware of him. Now Mecca began the delving, delving means digging, and building of the vast fortress deep deep under earth beneath dark mountains where the beams of Elohim were called and them uh, where the lamps Elohim lamps uh, the light of it was called and them dim means low in brightness the stronghold was named uh, Otomna and though the Valar knew not of it is as yet Yes, the Valar didn't be uh, aware of the fortress of Melkor. Nonetheless, the evil of Melkor and the blights, blights of his hatred flowed out thence. And the spring of Arda was married. Green things fell sick and rotted, and the river were choked with weeds and slime. A blight means infected. Slime means uh, covered with uh, slippery substances that married it or disfigured it or killed it. Choked with weeds and slime and fence were made. Fence means just like a marshes, a pitter marshes made. Rank and poisonous. Uh, rank means uh, growing too thickly and coarsely. And poisonous, to clear. Uh, the breeding place of lies and the forest grew dark and perilous. Uh, perilous means danger. Uh, the hounds of fear and beasts became monsters of horn and uh, ivory and dyed the earth with blood. Ivory means uh, creamy white color. And dyed the earth, the earth with blood. Then the dyed means filled the, just like ink that dyed the, for example, the paper here. The I've uh, dyed the earth of the monster. Then the Valar knew indeed that Milka was at work again, and they sought for his hiding place. But Milka 
trusting in the strength of, Ot of Otomna. And the might of his servants came forth suddenly to war and struck the first blow, hits the first blow, ere the valor was prepared, because the valor weren't prepared for this strike. And he assailed the lights of Elwin and Ormal, or attack the lights of Elwin and Ormal, and cast down their pillars and broke their lambs in the overthrow of the mighty pillars. Lands were broken and seas arose in a tumult, and when the lambs were spilled, destroying flame was poured out, out over the earth, and the shape of Arda and the symmetry of its water and its lands were married in this time, in, the ta in that time, so that the first design of the valor were never after restored. So even if they after restored, it will never came to the first time they design it. In the confusion and the darkness of uh, Milker escaped through fear fell upon him, for the above the roaring of the seas, he heard the voice of the manway as a mighty wind, and the earth trembled beneath the feet of Tolkas. But he came to uh, Otomno, ere Tolkas could overtake him. So uh, Milkas ran over before Tolkas could ever seek after him or find him. And they, there he lay hide. Because uh, they didn't know uh, where exactly Otomno, the Merkur fortress, place. And the Valar could not at that time overcome him, for the greater part of their strength was needed to restrain the tumult of the earth and to save from ruin all that could be said of, uh, of their labor. And afterwards, they feared to rend the earth again until they knew where the children of Levitar were dwelling who were yet to come in the time uh, that was hidden from the Valar. So uh, when they know where the children are dwelling, uh, they save their power and strength to uh, for them and living in Melkir and uh, departed from there. Thus end in the spring of Alda, the dwelling of the Valar upon Almarin was utterly destroyed. Uh, so Elmarin was utterly destroyed by Melkor, and they had no abiding place, a place for uh, uh, continuous place. So they were scattering all over the place, upon in the face of the earth. Therefore, they departed from Middle Earth and went to the land of Amman, the west uh, westernmost of all lands upon the borders of the woods. For its west shores looked upon the outer sea, that is called by the Elvis Echaia encircling the kingdom of Arda. How wide is that sea? None know but uh, the Valar. And beyond it are the walls of the night. But the east shores of Amman were the uttermost end of uh, Badger, the great sea of the west. And since Milka was returned to the Middle Earth and they could not yet overcome him, the Valar fortified their dwelling. And upon the shores of the sea, they rest the Pelori. The mountains of Amman, highest upon earth, and above all the mountains of the Pelori was the height upon whose summit Manwe set his throne, Tanquitl. So Tanquitl is the highest spot made by Manwe at the top mountains of Middle Earth, which are called Pelori. Uh, the elves named that holy mountains and Oyolose, everlasting whiteness, and Elrina, counted with stars, and many names beside. But the cinder spark of it in their later tongue as Amun Oilus, from their halls upon tranquil. Manwe and Father could look out across the earth even into the furthest east, because it's mightiest high. Behind the walls of Pelori, the Valar established their domain in this, in that region, which is called Valinor, and there were their houses, their gardens, and their towers in that guarded land. The Valar gathered great store of light and, and the fairest thing that were saved from the ruin, and many other yet fairer they made anew. And Valinor 
became more beautiful even than Middle Earth in the spring of Ida and it was blessed. So it's even Valinor is more beautiful even uh, uh, days before Melkog Magid Earth or in its splendors uh, during the days of the spring of Ida before. For the deathless dwelt there and they are not faded nor withered withered. Neither was there any stain upon floor or leaf in the land, nor any corruption or sickness in anything that laid, lived for that very stones and waters were hallowed. And when Valinor was uh, full wrought and the mansions of the Valar were established in the midst of the plain, beyond the mountains they built their city, uh, Valmar of many bells. So it's the city called Valma. Has many bells. Before the western gate, there was a great mound. Uh, mounds means hell. Yes. Isolha. Isolha. Uh, that is named also Corolere. Corolere. And Yavana hallowed it. And she sat there long upon the green grass and sang a song of power in which was set all her thoughts of things that grow in the earth. But Nienna thought in silence and waited the moles with tears. Uh, in that time the Valar were gathered together to hear the song of Yavanna, and they sat silent upon their thrones of council in the Mahanaksa. Mahanaksa the ring of doom near the golden gates of Valma, and Giovanna Kementari sang before them, and they washed. As they washed upon the mounds, uh, there came forth two slender shots, and silence was over all the world in that hour, nor was there any other sound save the chanting of Giovanna. Uh, under her song, the saplings grew and became fair and tail. Sapling means young trees. And came to flower and thus there awoke in the world uh, the two trees of Valinor. Of all things which Havana made they ha uh, have most renown or uh, let's say uh, become familiar with or no. And about their fate, uh, all the tales of the elder days are woven. So the elder days uh, starts or began. Uh, the one had leaves of the dark green that beneath were, are, uh, were as shining silver, and from each of his countless flowers, a dew of silver light was ever failing. And the earth beneath was dabbling with the shadow of his fluttering leaves. Uh, doubled me marked with spot and batches uh, because of the fluttering or the movement uh, that come and forth uh, forward or back of the leaves that makes the doubling uh, by the shadows of the fleece floating leaves. Uh, the other bore leaves of a young green like the new open peach their edge were of glittering gold. Flowers swung uh, upon her branches in a cluster of yellow flame, formed each to a glowing horn that spilled a golden rain upon the ground. And from that blossom of that tree, there came forth warmth and a great light. Uh, Tilibrion, the one was called in Valinor, and Silpion, uh, and uh, Ninquilote. And many other names, but Lyorlen, uh, the other was, and Malind um, uh, Malinalda, and Kyodiorian, and many names in song besides. So it ha uh, those two trees has many names, made by Yavana. The two trees of Valinor, yes, that's their features. In seven hours, the glory of each tree waxed to full and waned again to naught. 
so in the seven hours, just like the trees, uh, the leaves are filled with the uh, wax. These wax are just like lights or laminated to fall. And uh, uh, on other uh, hours, it's waned or uh, reduced or reducted again to not to nothing. Like uh, the lamination, there's no lamination or light. And each awoke once more to life an hour before the other cease to shine. So one lets an hour before the other uh, decreased in uh, lamination or light. Thus in Valinor twice every day there came a gentle hour of a softer light, when both trees were faint and their gold and silver beams were mingled. Mingled, uh, so it's like the time when the first uh, are not filled, shined, and the second are, uh, uh, is after shined, it's all uh, waned where there is a soft light between them. This ha happens after uh, 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 twice every day. Uh, Tiliberian was the elder of the trees. Uh, so Tiliberian is the uh, older one, or the bigger one of the trees, and came first to full stature and to bloom. And the, that first hour in which he shone the white glimmer of the silver down uh, glimmer uh, means just like uh, a color of silver or something. Uh, the white glimmer of a silver down just like uh, a dusk or first appearance of light, just like it's first uh, laminated. The valor reckoned it into the tales of ours. Uh, Reckoned it means calculating it at the first, uh, not into the tail of hours, not in the mid of hour, but named it the opening hour, and counted uh, from it the age of their reign. Uh, reign, in Valinor, reign means uh, their realm. Yes. Therefore, at the sixth hour of the uh, of the first day and of the all the joyful days thereafter, until the darkening of the Valinor, Tiberian ceased his time of flower uh, and at the twelfth hour Lyorlan her, uh, her blossoming, blossoming and each day of the valor in the Amman contained twelve hours and ended with the second mingling of the light mingling of the lights is the time where two uh, trees are have a short, uh, let's say a dim light or a soft light in which layer line was so uh, 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 Tilbrion is the elder trees and the younger trees is layer was waning waning, uh, waning but Tilbrion was waxing but the light that was spilled from the trees endured long so it's not when that uh, when the wax fall from the trees or the light it's all instantly let's say dimmed off or extinguished but it will endure for a little uh, for a long time before it's extinguished Here it was taken up in the airs or sank down into the earth before it was uh, let's say taken up the, uh, into the airs or sank down into the earth and the dews of Tilibrion and the rain that fell from Lyurlan Varda hoarded in great vats uh, storing these thing of rains and dews in a uh, great vats, great vats was like uh, lakes or a uh, bowl, like shining lakes that were to all the land of the Valar as wells of water and of light. Thus began the days of the place of Valinor, and thus began also the count of time. But as the age do, uh, draw on the hour appointed by Iluvatar for the coming of the firstborn, Middle Earth lay in the twilight beneath the stars. That Varda had wrought in uh, in a twilight beneath the stars that Varda had wrought uh, in the age forgotten of her labor in Aya and in the darkness Milker dwelt and still often walked abroad in many shapes of power and fear and he wielded cold and fire from the tops of the mountains to the deep Furan Furnaces uh, Furnaces means uh, Oven, just like oven, to heat things that has enclosed door that are beneath them, and whatsoever 
uh, was cruel or violent or deadly in those days is laid to his charge. From the beauty and place of Valinor, the valor came seldom over the mountains to Middle Earth, but gave to the land beyond the Pelori their care and their love. And in the midst of the blessed realm uh, were the mansions of Auli. And there he labored long for in the making of the things in that land. He had the chief part, and he wrought there many beautiful and shapely works, both openly and in a secret of him. Comes the lore and knowledge of the earth and of, th uh, of uh, all things that it contains. Whether the lore of those that mix, uh, make not, but seek only for the understanding of what it's. Uh, or the law of craftsman, weaver, the shaper of wood, and the worker in metals, and the tiller, and the ha uh, tiller looks like farm and husband man, also the farm, uh, farmer, sorry, farmer, both are means farmer. Also, those uh, these last and all that deal t uh, deal with things that grow and bear fruit, most like also to to the spouse of our lady Yavana Kimanturi. So what he uh, is saying there, uh, what ha they have understand from that, or what is law of craftsmen, what are the craftsmen, the weaver, the shaper, they start making things, uh, understanding how uh, the earth came or shaped, and like uh, knowing the crafts, or the ca uh, let's say the professions of doing many things. Now, Auli, it is who is named the friend of the Noldor, for uh, Noldor, one of the elder of elves. For of him they learned much in after days. So Noldor learned many of uh, from El Auli, like the crafts or things, and they are most skilled of the elves, and in their own fashion, ac uh, according to the gifts which Luvatar gave to them. They added uh, much to his ch uh, teaching, delighting to tongue and scripts and the uh, and in the figures of uh, broidery. Uh, broidery means doing ornaments, so they start uh, crafting and doing ornament, uh, co decorating of drawing and of carving. So th uh, the Noldor and among all others is most skilled and learned much from Auli. The Noldor also it was who first achieved the making of gems, the one who was ma making the gems, and the fairest of, an of all gems were the Silmarils, and they are lost. But Manui Solimo, highest and the holiest of all the valor, sat upon the borders of Amman, forsaking not in uh, his thoughts uh, the outer lands, forsaking uh, means uh, abandon yes uh, so forsaken not in uh, his thought the outer land so it was abandoned the outlet of him from his thought for his throne was set in the majesty upon the pinnacle of Tanquetel, the highest of the mountains of the world standing upon the margin of the sea spirits in the shape of house and eagles flew o uh, ever to and from his halls, and their eyes could see to the depth of the seas, and pierced the hidden caverns, the caverns means caves, uh, beneath the world. Thus they brought wor uh, word to him of well nigh all th uh, that passed in Arda, what happened, uh, or ha what are things that are passed in ch uh, l uh, there, the hawks and the eagles have passed in order uh, just like telling them, telling Manui, those things. Yet some things were hidden f uh, even from the eyes of Manui and the servants of Manui, for uh, where Melchior sat in his dark thoughts, a penetrable shadows lie. Uh, so the eagles and the hawks of Manui, uh, of Manui uh, see Let's like seeing everything they passed in Arda, except uh, a, s a single spot where the impenetrable shadows lie, where the dwelling of Manu, of uh, Melka.
Manui has no thought f uh, for uh, his own honor, is not jealous of his power, but calls uh, all to peace. He was not uh, Manui, not jealous of his power, nor uh, thinking of his honor or something, but he, uh, he just want to uh, let the deep, uh, let the peace come comes to all Middle Earth region. On the Vanya, he loved peace of all the elves, and of him they received song and poetry, for poetry is the delight of Manwe, and the song of the words is th his music. His raiment is blue, and blue is the fire of his eyes, and his scepter is of sapphire. Uh, sapphire is a type of, uh, uh, let's say, what's the meaning? Scepter is the... Uh, it's like an ornamented staff carried by the rulers, carried by, uh, let's say, Manui, uh, in a ceremonial occasion, just like a uh, stick. Sapphire is made from sapphire, is a transparent, precious stone, typically blue, uh, which the Noldor wrote for him. So it was made by Noldor, as we uh, said before, that Noldor, uh, among the elves, are most skilled and created many gems. And he was appointed to be the vicegerent, vicegerent of Elevator. Uh, vicegerent means uh, represent representative, representative. Yes, or just like the messenger of Elevator, king of the world of Valar and elves and men, and the chief defense against the evil of Melkor. With Manwe dwelt Yvarda, the most beautiful. She who in the Sindarin, Sindarin tongue is named Elpareth. Elpareth. So Evada in the Sindarin tongue named Elpareth, queen of the Valar, maker of the stars, and with uh, than were great host of spirits in a blessedness. Uh, but Olmo was alone, and he abode not in Valinor. Abode means not. Uh, dwell in, uh, and not in Valinor, nor ever came they there, uh, unless there was a need for a great council. He dwelt from the beginning of Arda in the outer ocean until he was there. Thence he governs or rules the flowing of the waters and the ebbing. Uh, ebbing means uh, of a tide water moves away from the lands or the seas, so just like uh, the tide of water. And the courses of, an, uh, of all rivers and the replenishment of springs, uh, replenishment, restoring of the springs, the distilling of all dews and rain in every land beneath the sky. Distilling means uh, glittering or shining. So uh, the distilling of all dews and rain in every land beneath the sky and the deep places he gives thought to music great and terrible and the echo of that music runs through all the veins of the world in the sorrow and in a joy. For a joyful uh, is the fountain that rises in the sun. Its springs are in the wells of the sorrow unfathomed at the foundation of, uh, of the earth. Unfathomed means unexplored at the foundation of the earth. So they w uh, they didn't know that uh, fountain, the foundation of the earth, but they know it after. The Tillery learned much of the Olmo, uh, and for that, for this reason, their music has both. So we have many uh, elves, every uh, elves folks, every elves folks are with one of the Valar. We have the Noldor. We have the Tillery, we have the Elder, uh, and for this reason their music has both sadness and enchantment. Uh, and the Vanya also from the Elves. For itself, for uh, the found uh, where we have reached, uh, Salmer came with him to Arda. He who made the horns of Olmo that none may ever forget who once ha uh, has heard them. And Ose and Unison and Union Onion also, to whom he gave the government of the waves and the movement of the inner seas, and many other spirits besides. So it was rolled all by uh, 
Olmo. And uh, I, I give them uh, give that learning to Tillery, a group of elves. Uh, Salma came with him to Ada. He uh, that made the horns of Olmo, helping uh, Olmo to make the horns. Uh, that was ever heard by all, and Ossian and the Onion also Onion, uh, to whom he gave the government. Uh, so the Olmo gave also and Onion the government of the waves and the movement of the inner seas and many other spirits beside. And thought it was by the power of Olmo that even under the darkness of Milker life course, still though, through many secret lords, lords like v uh, veins or stones. And the earth did not die, and, and to all uh, to all who were lost in the darkness or went it wandered far from the light of the Valar. Uh, the air of Elmo was ever was ever open, nor has uh, uh, he ever forsaken Middle. He didn't forget Middle Earth after the marrying of uh, Melka by Melka, and uh, was uh, and whatsoever may since he befallen or of ruin or the change has not ceased to take thought for it. Uh, Befallen befo uh, means something bad happened or what happened uh, to all that things, uh, many th things since the befallen of or the ruin that changed to Middle Earth, he has not ceased to take thought for it. So still he has the things of it and will not until the end of the days and he always uh, almost always has a thought of all middle earth until the end of days and at the time of dark yavana also was unwilling and utterly uh, uh, to forsake the outer lands she didn't want to forsake or forget the outer lands for all the things teach go are dear to her uh, Uh, let's see we have here yes they to her go out there to her and she mourned for the uh, works that she had begun the mother earth but make her had married she mourned or she she grieved for the works that she had begun or crafts or shape in the middle earth but make her then came and married it therefore leaving the house of Auli and the following flowering meads and uh, of the Valinor, she would come at a time and heal the hearts of Milka. The hearts of Milka. Meads means alcoholic drink or fermented honey and water. And uh, returning, she would ever urge the Valor uh, to the war with uh, his evil dominion that they must surely wage. So they mu uh, she just like urged the Valor to do a war against Milka. Dominion, and, and this one must surely wait, must be taken in consideration. Ere the coming of die, before the coming of death or die, or the end of the days, they must uh, make a war before the end of the days. And Ogo may tamer of beast, or the means tamer means bits, bits of the beast, uh, will ride to at whites in the darkness of that unlit forest, as mighty hunter. And lit means the dark forest that doesn't have a light. As a mighty hunter, he came with a spear and bow, pursuing to the death the monsters and fell creatures of kingdom of Melkor. And his white horse, Nahar, shone like silver in the shadows. Then the uh, sleeping earth trembled at the beat of his golden hoofs, hoofs of the, his horse. So it's just like earthquake under him. Uh, and in the twilight of the world, Orome will uh, sound the Valar Valaroma, his great horn, upon the plains of Arda, whereas the mountains echoed, and the shadows of ill fl fled away, and, uh, just by hearing the mountain, echo of the mountains, by the Valaroma, the, the great horn of, uh, uh, of uh, Orome, yes. And Milker himself quailed in autumn, autumn, no, even in autumn when he, 
he heals the uh, Valagoma with the great horns of uh, uh, Oromi. It's just like Quailed means fear, fear in Atonmo. Even in his fortress, I'm still afraid or fear. Forboding the ra the wraith to come. Forboding means uh, perceiving or uh, considering uh, or feeling that something bad will happen. But even as Oromi passed, the servants of Melkor will. Even as Oromi passed, the servants will uh, of Melkor will gather again, and the lands were filled with shadows and deceit. So when Oromi leaves the place again, the servant of Melkor will come again and gather, and uh, the lands will f still fill with shadows, and the shadows will return and deceit or deceive. And uh, now all is said concerning the manner of the earth, and it will. Uh, it all its rulers in the beginning of days, and ere the world became such that uh, the children of Levitar have known uh, it. For elves and men are the children of Levitar, and since they understood not fully the, sh the theme by which the children entered into the music, none of the I know dared to add anything to their fashion, for which reason the Valar uh, are to those candidates. Candidates. Um, candidates means uh, folks. Uh, so we have here uh, our two those candidates, their folks. Uh, uh, rather, uh, rather their elders and their chieftains, chieftains than their masters. So they were, uh, weren't the uh, the I know weren't dare to add anything to their fashion or to their music or to their shape. As ordered by Ruvatar, unlike Melkor. For which reason, the Valar are to those are to these candidates, uh, rather their elders, neither their elders uh, or their followers of elves or their chieftains, than their masters. And if ever in their uh, dealing with elves and men, the I know have endeavored uh, to force them when they not be guided. So just like uh, making them encouraged and, uh, and not uh, endeavor, uh, just like uh, doing endeavor or try to force them, uh, where they will not be guided. Seldom has this turned to good. However, good the intent. Maybe the intention may be good, but not always w will be turned into something good, because they weren't guided by them. The dealing of the Ainar have indeed most often uh, uh, been mostly with the elves. For Ilvatar made them most likely in a nature to Ainar. So the elves just like the Ainar in nature. That's why the most dealing of the Ainar or the Valar with the elves. Uh, though less in might and stature. Of course, the, the elves are less in might and stature, whereas to men he gives strength gifts, strange gifts, while the man, uh, Elvita, gave to them strange gifts. For it said that after the departure of the Valar, there was silence, and uh, for an age, Elvita sat alone in thoughts. Then he spoke and said, Behold, I love the earth, which shall be a mansion for the Quindi and the Atani. Quindi are the elves, Atani are the men. But the Quindi shall be the fairest of the earthly of all earthly creatures. So, like the most creatures are peaceful, of all, among all the cre creatures, and they shall have and shall conceive and bring forth more, more beauty than all my children, and they shall have the greater bliss in this world. But to uh, the Atani, means the man, I will give a new, a new gift. Therefore, he will that the hearts of men shall seek beyond the world, and shall find no rest therein, but they shall have a virtue, virtue means uh, morality, or willing, to shape their life amid the powers and the chances of the world, beyond the music of the Aina, which uh, is as fate to all things else. So the music of Aina, just like controlling the elves, controlling all creatures except the man uh, finding their uh, shaping their entire life alone 
and of their operation everything shall be in form indeed completed and uh, the word fulfilled and unto the last and smallest so they will be the smallest and the last uh, after the full uh, yes shall be in the form and the but Luvatar knew that man being set amid the tumults uh, of the powers of the world will stray often so they will be the men are easy to be stray away by the powers of Melchor and tumults and will not use their gifts in a harmony and he said these two in their time shall find that all that they do redounds at the end uh, redounds as we said before uh, contributes yes uh, so time shall find that the, uh, they do with contributes or contribution at the end only to the glory of my work so all that things are just a contribution to my glory of my work of Elevator. yet uh, the elves believe that men are often a grief to Manwe uh, just like Manwe has a grief uh, about the man who knows most of the mind of Elevatar, for it seems to us that men resemble Melkor, most of all I know, of all the I know. So just like men uh, resemble Melkor, just like they want to do shape their own life by their own, not uh, restrained by the music of I know, just like uh, all the I know does, except Melkor, who is shaping his own power. So the men also have the could use the same concept on them. Also, he has ever feared and hated them, even those that served him. So Milka also hates the men and uh, feared him, also those who uh, served him for his own well. It's one with, uh, with this gift of freedom that the children of men dwell only a short space in the world alive. So at the end, men will dwell only a short space in the world alive they will decrease in uh, number and uh, dwell in a short place or single place or let's say small space in the world and are not bound to it or they and they will not uh, stay uh, for it or let's say they are not everlasting in it and depart soon whether with what, what whether the elves know it not knows not Whereas the elves remain until the end of the day. So just like the, we could say that the elves are immortal while the men are mortal. And their love of the earth and all the world is more single and more poignant, therefore. So the elves just like loving the earth more and more poignant. More poignant means more emotional, therefore. And as the years lengthen over ever more sorrowful, they will be more sorrowful about the earth or what happened to it. For the elves die not till, till the world dies so the elves won't die until the world dies until the end of the world unless they are slain or they are wasted in grief just like or they are they are not uh, of course they are immortal but they, if they were killed uh, they will be dead yes if they were killed <laughs> sorry so, uh, they could be killed like slain or wasted in grief and to the both this seeming death they are subject so the slain or wasted for both men and elves, these uh, deaths, they are subject to it. Neither does age subdue their strength, so the age will not uh, have effect uh, about their strength, unless one ago weary of 10,000 centuries, unless elf uh, lives for uh, 10,000 centuries and dying. They are uh, until the, uh, so if they live weary and tired of 10,000 centuries, they may die. And when they are die, uh, they are gathered to the halls of Mandos in the Valinor, whence, the, uh, whence means in which they may in time return. So even if they die, they will uh, uh, gather their body gathered to the halls of Mandos and they will be sent back again to life again. Wherefore they are called the uh, but the sons of men die indeed. Of course, the men will die indeed and leave the world. Wherefore uh, means for that they are called the guests, the guests or the strangers. Death is their fate. The gift of Levitar, which as time wears, even the powers 
or when the times uh, become long even the powers shall invade means the power shall uh, invade the man but Mulkirk has cast his shadow upon it and confounded it with darkness confounded it means filled it or let's say uh, emphasized it with darkness and brought e uh, forth evil out of the good and fear out of the hope yet of uh, all the valor declared to the elves in Valinor that men shall join the second music of the Aino, whereas Ulvatar has not revealed, so he didn't uh, know uh, detail or that uh, what's uh, not whatever re uh, revealed by Ulvatar. What he purposed for the elves after the words, and and Melka has not discovered it. And that's the end of this chapter. Mm -hmm.